don't think this worked at all. I think my hair was too clean because I washed it to cut it yesterday. I don't know if I did a good job. It's so clean. It gets so gross in the winter because of all the little gravel and like salt snow. But I um, wanted to talk about this. I started reading this. I'm like 10 chapters in, but the chapters are like really short. Um, and I really, mm, I'm enjoying it. And I do find it compulsively readable, but there are moments where I'm like, the voice is very heavy handed. I feel like it's very much like the author trying to be funny. Um, but essentially what this book is about is our main character, Oliver, I think his name is, um, is in a long-term relationship with his boyfriend, Gus, and the spark has sort of just fizzled out. He also has cerebral palsy and is dealing with his own idea of his self, the way that he's perceived as um, a sex object or not perceived as a sex object in this culture that he's in like m gay male culture basically um, and yeah it's really interesting he hires an escort to feel something and that is where I'm at he is exploring <laughs> a beautiful Saturday look at that Sun coming in you can't even see it's so overexposed um, wanted to do a reading update because I have things to say basically I DNF'd um, just by looking at him I was 40 ish pages in and I wasn't enjoying it that much and it was overdue at the library and they wouldn't let me put holds on anything else so I was like okay it's time to return it I, it's fine, whatever. Uh, so that's done. I tried to listen to this audiobook called Flux by, uh, I'll put the author's name here, I forget. But um, yeah, I also didn't really like that. Nothing is hitting, but I'm feeling a bit hopeful. I'm listening to Care Work, or I literally barely started listening to Care Work. Uh, again, forgetting the author's name, but I'll put that here as well. Um, on audio yesterday before a friend was coming over, like while I was cooking dinner and it just got it on the audio, they went introduction and then my friend knocked on the door. So haven't heard much of that. We'll listen to it and let you know. And also have a few books on my Kindle, one of uh, which is called Bottoms Up and the Devil Laughs. It's about data and media, like new, it's a nonfiction book about new media, sort of meme culture, I assume, from that title. Uh, but that should be pretty interesting. And then another book on my Kindle, but I forget. Um, I'll let you know what I eventually end up reading. But yeah, just did want to update and say I'm no longer reading Friendship Over with uh, Ryan O'Connell author whose name I can't remember is my best friend now but yeah that's that's what's going on all right cool see you soon I remember the last time I was talking to you from the kitchen uh, you're in the dish cabinet right now, by the way. Um, I was like, oh my god, it's such a beautiful day. Look at, look how beautiful it is. You can't tell, but it's so gray and gloomy. It's been raining and it's like 11 degrees, which is crazy because it's like, if you're going to rain, at least be cold. 
Um, actually, no, I take that back. Anyway, I'm packing my lunch, getting ready to go to work, school, all of the things, basically leave my house. Um, I made a really nice tomato orzo last night because my friend came over for dinner, caught up, it was sweet. But I wanted to talk to you about Care Work by Lia Lakshmi Piepsna Samrasana, I want to say. I don't think that's right, but um, I finished listening to this book on audio yesterday and I found it interesting. I found it useful. Um, this book essentially is about the disability justice movement and makes the differentiation between disability rights and disability justice. Disability rights has very much been within the framework of like, uh, it's been a very white movement and also within a very, uh, like these are the legal changes we could make to, like very predicated on rights and law and, you know, like rights that um, legislation will avail people as opposed to disability justice, which is more focused on creating equitable networks of community and care, um, as the title suggests, care work, and how accessibility can be created by the community for the community and what that looks like, um, not just waiting for some bill to pass because within like the framework of who is or isn't recognized by the law as disabled or who even wants to engage with the law, there is like histories of racial injustice and various levels of marginalization built in. Um, and so I thought that was interesting. Uh, the author talks specifically about care work, which is the uh, identifying sort of the labor of care as being work that you do and how she writes specifically from her position as a she specifically repeats brown femme, working class brown femme, which is like, it's important to say like where you're writing from. And I think it is a valuable category in this instance because she's talking about how um, racialized people experience ableism in a different way than white people experience ableism. And I think that's all fair. I did find the like repeated mention of her identity is very, gimmicky in a way uh very lip servicey but whatever like that doesn't take away from the things that she's saying uh but yeah she, what was i talking about oh she was talking about how like as feminine presenting people or people that are you know affected by misogyny you get burdened or you, not even burdened but a lot of the work of caring for people gets pushed onto you and within any social space any sort of organizing space you're automatically assumed to be in the role of caregiver because of how um you're racialized and how like you're perceived like gender wise um, and so that was interesting talking about how you know for disability justice you go as slow as the slowest person and what that looks like like working with disabled people whereas a lot of times like disability rights will frame disability within this like uh cure mindset where it's like you either overcome it or you get fixed where that's like just not the reality for a lot of people um and a lot of people will just like get sicker because that's how it works and that doesn't mean that they don't deserve care and they don't deserve um like people their needs attended to because there is no getting better uh so yeah very useful for that I think there were a few things that I was like, hmm, about with this book, specifically in her talking about like the gendered nature of care work. Totally agree that people that are like misogyny affected get uh, sort of pigeonholed into this role of like, she says like mommy, um, like fixer, and it's true. I just thought the way that she was framing this argument was a bit unnecessary she was talking about how femmes and here she's like using femmes as a stand-in to anyone that participates in femininity um which is not necessarily the context that i have heard this used in i mean obviously i've heard it used uh, that way but anyway she talks about how femmes are sort of like looked down upon and seen as like 
frivolous or too much or like blah 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 more closely aligned with capitalism because the like femme identity is like closely tied to consumption people assume and then she goes and says um but that's not true uh but just by hair gel too like they're consuming as well and i'm like why are they in this like please leave them out of it it's weird i don't know it seemed to me that she was framing butches and trans mask people as being somehow closely more closely aligned to patriarchy because they're masculine which is not true like if you talk to any butches or if you know any butches like that's just not how that works at all um and so i found that a bit like mm, i don't know i don't know about that um but outside of that i did think that this was a useful book quite repetitive at times um and but i think the author does a really good job narrating this book it seems like she's just talking to you i like the fact that you can like hear her emotional responses to like she's laughing at the parts that she thinks are funny or like you can hear her getting choked up about things that are difficult to talk about um yeah well done overall a bit repetitive but useful for especially if you're someone that is like um reading about disability justice for the first time it might be a good introductory text um yeah i can't say much more about it i think that's it i've been talking for seven minutes so i do think i have covered my thoughts about it um i do think i'm sorry i just fell over uh i do think i'm gonna end this vlog here potentially who knows it is the last day of february and i don't really have much more to say hi i'm actually not done talking um in the last clip also i think i said it was the last day of february it wasn't it's a leap year of course so today is the last day of february but i wanted to circle back on a thought that i had or i was getting at with care work i was sort of talking about how something about the author consistently like mentioning their identities and starting every sentence with as a brown femme or that kind of thing felt weird to me um i was talking about this with my friend and my thesis supervisor during our directed reading in the context of artists and non-western artists um consistently being labeled as their nationality and then whatever they are with categories like this and with the creation of you know all these labels it feels like there is an attempt to be legible which is useful when you're talking about systems of marginalization to understand how structures work it's important to look at people as not parts not individuals but parts of a social class that is oppressed in a certain way by systems of power but when identity gets individualized or these labels get individualized they become a little bit more useless and they become more so a move towards legibility from a person who's in the periphery like whatever this label is because this label is you know marking a deviation from the norm where the norm is like white cis hetero patriarchal blah 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 it's marking a deviation from that right and by asserting again and again that you are a brown femme working class it again like reifies the center as the center and then marks your distance from it which I don't know if it's necessarily useful. It's useful to talk about that space, but it's not really useful to consistently reiterate these identities and labels because it feels like you're trying to make yourself legible to those in the center. And in doing that, flattening your own perspective or flattening your own, not even individuality, but discreteness yeah individuality but not in like a because like you know individuality is also completely that's a whole nother conversation but 
those are some of the issues I had with that. It feels lip servicey, as I was saying. It feels very put on. And I don't like when people only see me as my identities because identity is only relational. Like it informs my experience in the world and like all that, but there's a person beyond it. And I think, yeah, it's a bit dehumanizing. It's a bit tokeny. Um, tokenizing to do that and that is the issue or trouble I was having with that that I was trying to articulate but not doing a very good job but yeah so this is actually the end of this reading vlog I'm going to start a new reading vlog for reading week um, I just went to the library earlier and picked up a few books so I will tell you about those and that reading vlog but yeah Thank you so much for watching. If you've read Care Work or if you're familiar with the disability justice movement, if you generally have thoughts about any of the things I said, um, would love to talk, would love to know what you feel, what you think in the comments um, or just say hi. I love chatting. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon. Now I'm going to go get ready to go eat dosa. I'm so excited. Okay, hi!